Ladies and gentlemen, on this YouTube channel, I talk about chess. Some of you knew that already. Some of you might be watching me for the first time. Welcome to the channel. It's called Gotham Chess. It's not called Gotham Checkers, Poker, Smoothies, or anything else. And I bring you everything. I bring you Hikaru versus Magnus. I bring you chess bots and AIs and cheater content. But I have an entire playlist here called How to Lose at Chess, where low elo games are analyzed, made fun of, dissected, laughed at, turned into educational content, and shown to all of you. Today's game was sent to me by a subscriber from Brazil. And it's low elo chess content, but it's 900 elo chess, so it's probably three to four times higher than some of your elos. And this game was tough. This game had almost no good moves, but it had one. And that one was a rook sacrifice. And if you know anything about me, it means I'm going to turn it into content. Now, my friends, if you're lucky enough to catch this video in the first 24 hours that it's out, all courses, 25% off, still. A little sale going on, because we have the new Dutch defense course. Also, if you'd like literally any, listen to me. If you want any of my courses for free, they are available. There are massive free samples. So, take your chess learning into your own hands. Anyway, this game was played by Fisher, not Bobby, he's not alive, uh, who is a 930 rated player from Brazil, and Sajan, who's literally as close as possible as you could be to 930 without being 930. And you may notice there are no clocks. That's because this was a daily game. The players had seven days to make every single move. That's 168 hours. That's 9,000 something, I don't know, not minutes, whatever. Anyway, the game began with pawn to d4, and black responded with pawn to e6, which is completely fine. So far, so good. Black, of course, would like to play d5, c5, maybe f5. I don't know what black is going to play, right? If you play d4, e6, it means you're okay with the transposition. You have to, you have to remember, just because white started with the queen's pawn doesn't mean white can't play e4 on the second move. So e6 is a very interesting decision uh, by black. Uh, and white goes for a London. White has shown their cards. They'd like to play a London. And uh, they're going to play e6, e3, knight f3, knight e2, c3, finish the pyramid. Now, I really hate black's next move. Black plays queen f6. So, queen f6 is basically the scholar's mate, right, in reverse. It's like developing your queen early. I hate it for a few reasons. Number one, queen f6 is a bad move. Just objectively speaking, past a certain point in chess, it's just a bad move. Second of all, it's bad against this opening because white is so solid, you're never mating, and it's literally impossible to mate white. Third of all, you're 900, which you shouldn't be playing it at this time. Fourth of all, this is a daily game. White has seven days not to blunder something stupid. Like, you have to understand, if you're playing this in bullet, it's one thing. Three minute, one thing. Even ten minute. White has literally one week per move. Per move. White could spend six days, another six days, another six days, another six... Or I don't know. I don't know if that's the way it works, if it resets or what. White plays e3 because that's the London. And, and now black has nothing. And the thing is, when this queen comes out... And I have a video called How to Punish Early Queen Attacks. Like, black can't play with the queen early. Not to mention, if any of you are wondering if that's a free pawn, it is. It's 100% a free pawn. Yeah, black can do something like this and trap your bishop. But first of all, you can always take. Second of all, nobody's actually attacking you, so you could just develop. And third of all, you could always run that way. So even if b6 happens, you just take the knight. Now, okay, e3, fine. I mean, I told you there was, like, no good moves, right? Now black plays knight c6. Okay, I really wish black would have just developed the knight last move, but fine. Um, white plays knight c3. Not necessarily the best move. It's probably better to build the, to build, build the pyramid. But okay, knight c3. Now, black's next move makes negative sense. Negative. It makes less sense than zero. No disrespect to Sajan. I'm sure Sajan's Sajj probably a very nice guy, probably successful tech entrepreneur. I don't know. Or he's like eight years old. I don't know. Anyway, Black spends two days, I don't know, seven hours, I don't know, plays knight to b4. Now, 
Knight to b4 is bad because it violates about five different principles. Number one, why are you making multiple moves with a piece in the opening? If you're not capturing something or attacking something, this move attacks nothing. Nothing. It's a, it's a knight venture. The knight sees the pawns, which is covered in my book, by the way. I have an entire chapter dedicated to vision, attacking, capturing. You should pre-order it. 16,000 pre-orders. Probably going to drop as a New York Times bestseller. Just saying. Oh, and if you're in the UK, you can get a 25% off. A lot of promos. A lot of promos, but I'm excited. A lot, lot, a lot of cool stuff coming up, like book is coming out and course sales. and It's all to make you better. And yes, it's paid content, but I mean, it's kind of, you know, we live in a capitalist dystopia. So knight to b4 targets these pawns, but you shouldn't make knight moves like this. Like what was black's plan after a3? I don't know. They were going to spend another seven days. Anyway, knight b4 is played. Now, knight to b4. Okay. Knight to b4 would make sense if there was a bishop here. So, white moves the bishop. Now, look, man, I... Okay. So, essentially, moving the bishop to d3. Moving the bishop to d3, okay? Um, basically, here's what happened. Black drove a car through someone's house and made a hole. Terrible thing to do. You know what white does? Starts taking the same hole thinking it's a tunnel. Bro, no, that was a really bad thing that black just did. But wh white should not, that's not supposed to, you're not supposed to justify your opponent's terrible, and it doesn't even take, it doesn't even take. What are they spending the seven days on? I don't, now, I, you know, white just develops, okay? I, I mean, I really wish this bishop went literally to any other square, except maybe not that one. Because... This could just take, and I mean, that is what black should do. That is unquestionably the best move, is to take the bishop, because it's just a bishop. You're just getting a bishop, and then afterward, you know, after something like this, you know, you're, you're, you're gonna have a bishop, and white won't. Anyway, d6 is played, and it doesn't take very long for black to lose the game, uh, because, you know, black plays d5, and uh, black is lost. Black is lost because black did three things wrong in the opening. Brought their queen out, moved the knight twice, and moved the pawn twice. So the players have made six moves each, but it looks like black only made four moves. Right, like, it, it, okay, I suppose this is a two-mover, but it, black is a move behind. Now knight b5 is crushing, because it threatens that. It's very hard to defend that. It's impossible to defend that without losing a pawn. You gotta, you're gonna lose something. And then on top of that, there is another thing here... Which black does not realize. Black goes here, black loses. Black loses the game. Now, this is the stuff that drives me absolutely nuts with beginner level chess. This, is, this should not be beginner level chess. There is a checklist that must go through your head. Folks, I got this book right here. All right. I got a, I got a book right here. There's a whole chapter dedicated to this. It's called The Checklist. It's called How to Think in the Middle Game. Your opponent plays the move bishop to d6. Okay. This is the way you're supposed to think in chess. Opponent plays bishop d6, you go, what is the bishop doing? Ah, it's seeing my bishop. Okay. Many of you would react right now and go, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do something. No. Checks, captures, attacks. The only check white has in this position is bishop to b5. It's not a bad move, but it doesn't really make a whole lot of progress. Black can just block. You can capture a couple of things like this bishop and this pawn and that pawn, but none of them really make any progress. Attacks. Starting with the maximum value. Not a king, because you just looked at that with checks. Queen! Bishop g5. And by a miracle of God, this move would win the queen. The queen is completely trapped. If you just, in, if you just incorporate the checklist into your day-to-day -day life, it will change your life in chess. I don't know if it'll get you a relationship or a job, but it will change your life in chess. Bishop g5 just wins the game on the spot. Instead of that, Fisher goes, me bishop targeted, me defend bishop. Why? Why? Folks, you're just, it's just... This is like the most... It's just so natural. It's so... It's just like, oh, there's a queen there that my opponent put. Okay, pawn to g3. Okay. And now, now that but black spends six days on a move or whatever and plays h6. Okay? h6 now. And now bishop g5 is just not... It is, you just can't play it anymore. Bro, this is a daily game. You, you know what white does in this position? 
My friend, every move these two made violated something in chess. I'm not even trying to make fun of them. I'm not. They're 900. They gotta set a better example. The way you think in chess when the checklist doesn't get you anywhere, we just talked about the checklist. How do you determine in chess what's a good move? You have to make a move that either puts pressure on your opponent or improves your position in some capacity. That might involve a pawn trade, a piece trade. For instance, wouldn't it be great if in this position white could play pawn to e4 and that would result in a knight targeting some stuff? That would be nice. But if you play e4, black can take this bishop and open up your king. So why don't you take this and then open up the center? And this benefits you because black's king is stuck in the center, so opening up the position would give you an attack, and if black captures, your knight gets a little bit more activity, the queen now has to go backwards, you can trade the bishop off so the knight doesn't take it, then you can put your rook on the open file, maybe kick the knight out, and you've made progress. That's the way you're supposed to decide what's a good move in chess. Your opponent plays h6. You're not supposed to play h4. You put your king there. How can you move the king to the vacation home during the winter? How the, like, what? How does that even make sense? The king is over there. Now you're just opening up all the windows. What, what, what is... No. Well, I guess on a vacation home, you get, you know... Knight e7. And uh, bishop e5 traps the queen again. Again, total miracle. Completely unplanned. Instead of that, white plays queen e2. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't mind the move queen e2, but not when you can win a queen. Fine. Knight f5. Okay, now again, the best move is bishop e5, or bishop f5, or knight b5. White plays rook e1. Again, the computer not a big fan. Computer not liking any of the moves. Now, black does something here, which is so egregious. Black is playing a daily game. Black has seven days, 168 hours to come up with a good move. And black plays g5. This is just a counting exercise. Pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. And maybe black thought, I'll go here, and I'll go here, and it will be checkmate. That's three moves in a row. I don't know what universe you live in, that ain't happening. It's not happening. First of all, something will block you. Second of all, I'm gonna fight back on the H file. You don't just get to mate me. But instead of that, black plays G5, and now white plays E4. You know what E4 is? E4 is the equivalent of chess Russian roulette. You want my bishop, or my pawn, or my pawn, or my pawn, or my pawn, or my bishop, or my pawn, or my bishop, or my pawn, or my pawn, whatever, doesn't matter. Chess, Russian, roulette. Load a bullet in the chamber and it's gonna hit somebody. You want all of that and white wants maybe a pawn or a knight or a pawn or a bishop or a pawn or a pawn or a pawn. This is what's happening in this position. It's just what's happening, all right? Now, here we go, let's roll the dice. Knight takes d4, okay, great. Now, I could take a pawn or a bishop or a pawn or a fork or a pawn or a knight. Instead of that, we move our queen. Makes sense. Makes sense, because if you were watching closely in this position, taking all of this is nice, but you would lose a queen, and it would be check. That's the most important thing. Of course, you would take the knight here. Instead of that, we go here. Now, black has the same situation. I can take a bishop or a knight or a bishop or a bishop or a pawn or a pawn. Black plays. Pawn takes h4. One of the worst moves possible. Now, checks, captures, attacks. What is worth the most in black's position? Pawn to e5. The queen. And simultaneously closing off the diagonals and e5 would simply win material. But white can also capture the pawn and the pawn and the knight and the bishop and the pawn and the pawn. So what does white do? Knight takes d5. Seven days to come up with a move, you lose a knight in one move. Gone. Gone. The only reason the advantage is still back to white side is if you find the fork and not if you play pawn takes e5. That is definitely not the move. You know why white did this? You know why white sacrificed the knight? Because it's a check. That was the whole reason. Seven days to come up with a damn move. Seven, seven, a week, a week of time and you go, ha, check. Why are you playing daily chess? <laughs> now, black can move the king, can move the king. In general, you don't want to lose the right to castle. But it's worse to pin yourself 
and create a very big target for your opponent. Bishop e7, all the advantages back to white now because of knight takes knight, queen takes knight, and uh, this is a fork, but it's actually even more brutal than that. This is why you always look for checks in chess. In this position, it looks like white can go here, creating a fork on these two pieces. And that would be a good move, if not for the fact that white has one check in this position, and it just so happens to be a discovered attack on the queen. Bishop b5 check, no way to protect the queen, doesn't matter where black moves, and now white is completely winning. You have to look for checks. You never know. Sometimes a check is winning, sometimes it does nothing, but you have to look. Bishop e4. Knight takes f3. Bishop takes f3. Pawn takes g3. Pawn takes g3. Now we have a moment to breathe. Black plays rook g8. The attack roars forward. Pressure. Pressure. By the way, this knight is just here. That's just a horse wandering on the edge of the road. Any of you drive a car? Okay, everybody not from America just said, no, I ride a bicycle and walk like a normal citizen. Uh, any of you ever r hit a deer or drove like somewhere? There's a deer crossing or bison or unicorns. I don't know where you live or what drugs you take, but uh, Rook G8 pressuring White's King. And this knight is just... I <laughs> just wonder. The craziest thing is everywhere the knight looks, it sees something. It can, like, take something. Um, now, at this point, you need to look at this as a threat, but there's another threat here, which is actually queen takes bishop, because this is not actually defending. White plays pawn to d6. That, that is an interesting, aggressive move. Now, I guess the idea was that if pawn takes pawn, white was going to take. Here, something really peculiar happens. Rather than taking the bishop in one move, black goes here. Now, I think probably black saw discovered check, but I got news for you. I have no evidence of that whatsoever. Not, none. Zero evidence. Um, so queen h4. Queen h4 was played because the logic was, well, they can't take me because of this. Is there a follow-up to this move? Maybe it's sacrificing the rook. Maybe. Uh, in this position, white can take the bishop with the rook or with the pawn. I don't blame white for taking it with the pawn because obviously that's mate. I don't know if they saw that or if they even know queens can go that far. But also the pawn is very close to promotion. But in general, you should probably play the more forcing move. And it's a check. The reason you should play the more forcing move is because you're going to get closer to checkmate. Um, you have moves like... You know, bishop h5 in the future, or, I don't know, pawn to d7, pawn to d8 in the future, getting the pawn through. But you know what? Like I said, I don't mind this move. Now black sacrifices the rook, thinking this is a big and successful attack. Now, look, the good news is there is a little bit of an attack. The bad news is you are down a rook. You're kind of down more because your pieces aren't really doing anything. Like, just because they exist doesn't mean they're actually actively working to improve the position or the situation. Um, so it's kind of a, you know, it, it, it's, it's good and bad. Uh, you might have a draw, like the players could repeat moves. In fact, they actually start repeating moves. And then I would have, I, I don't know if white would have found bishop back, but instead black plays bishop 2e6. So black stops mate. The attack is roaring forward. Uh, the knight is still kind of awkwardly standing on the edge of the board. And now white covers up the king, which... Okay, I will give credit for that being a decent move, and maybe this is slightly exaggerated. Queen goes to g3. And now, my friends, white woke up. Wasn't exactly zero good moves. It was close. In this position, the clutch gene kicked in. The 900 elo player kicked in. And white channeled their inner Gotham. White's got a queen staring down at d8. White's got a rook staring down at the bishop, a rook staring down over here. There's got to be a way forward. That pawn is an anchor. And white in this position finds a sacrifice of the rook! Rook takes e6! An incredible shot. Very simple idea. If pawn takes, the rook slides in, the king has to take the pawn, and the rook gets the rook. And at that point, and just a little lesson for all of you, the way you win a position where you have such an advantage that white has, you can get it to an endgame. You can take as many pieces away from your opponent as possible, which is exactly what white is doing. And you have to make sure that you don't get perpetual checked. You have to make sure that queen e3 check, 
never leads to perpetual. For instance, king h2, queen f4, king g1, queen e3. Like, that would be a draw. But after king h1, there's no more checks. And if black tries to check you, you start the checks. You yourself start the checks. This move also wins a queen. Okay? So, that would be nice. And if you miss that, and instead you, uh, let's say, trade the queens, that's fine. You just have to win this position now. You just have to get to an endgame, promote a second pawn. So, rook a8, black plays knight d5. And now what I would do with, uh, with white is I would activate my queen. I would play queen to f3. And that is exactly what white did. That is a great move. Simultaneously activating your queen, teaming up with the rook, and offering a trade. And obviously, this is very winnable. You take that, you take everybody, you promote three knights, and then you checkmate. Black gives a check, white blocks, black gives a check, no more checks. That's it. Beautiful finishing clinical technique here. You know what? First time ever. I'm going to change the video, video description in the middle. Five good moves. Look at that. The people who didn't make it this far in the video will never see the change of the title. They'll never know. They all clicked on some prank video or I, I, what, what, whatever y'all watch. Roblox, Minecraft, I, I don't know. But they're not going to see the video changed. And I got news for you. It gets even better. Black tries to create some play, which I do like. I respect that a lot. But it's too late. Queen F8 check. Always look for checks. Always look for checks. There are a few checks to lose the queen. Queen F8. And now, 50. 50. Boom. Very, very nice. A lot of these videos that I upload have really stupid endings. But it's also nice if the ending is clean. If the game was goofy and they were doing some really absurd things... That's one thing, but I also would like to laugh and educate. So I hope you enjoyed it. 20 minutes spent, a lot of takeaways here. Stop bringing the queen out so early, and all you saw how to apply the checklist in a game. How to apply the checklist and not be so reactive, okay? Breaking a lot of principles, like pushing pawns in front of your king, and, <laughs> and, and that. that. You want to avoid that. You're going to win more games if you can minimize the chaos. Just like a fist fight. Just like a fist fight. You get chaos, you might get knocked out. Less of this. More of simplifying down the position and more forcing moves. Now get out of here. But not before you check out the courses. 25% off, free sample. Maybe pre-order the book. Whatever. You do what you want. I'm, I'm, I gotta, listen, I got 20 of them behind me over there. So I got to, you know. Anyway, get out of here. The, 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 the rare double get out of here.